grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus. Amen. I hope you had a great 4th of July. I really missed having the opportunity to see fireworks close together with friends and family, everyone in awe together. And I wonder if this time next year we'll finally be able to celebrate shoulder to shoulder again. If we'll have a vaccine and enough people will have been vaccinated so that most of us will finally be immune to COVID-19. I wonder if we'll be able to worship shoulder to shoulder and to raise our voices together once again in song. I wonder if the economy will be strong again and if farms and manufacturing facilities and construction companies will be able to find and keep the workers they need to really make this economy solid. I wonder if the kids will be enjoying a summer vacation after a long and productive school year in which they were able to be close to their friends and to be in the same classroom as their teacher. We have so much to look forward to, but in the meantime, there is still so much work to be done. Many more people need to make a personal commitment not to let themselves become virus hosts. They need to wear masks and exercise care so they don't harbor this tiny but fearsome virus enemy within their own bodies. We need to do the research to find out how the virus affects kids, whether it can in fact spread from child to child or child to adult, so that our kids don't have to lose another year of school and friends and sports if they don't have to. And we need to do the hard work of making human connections during this time when the riptides of social distancing and political polarization are pulling us apart. It's here among people of faith, in congregations, that we can witness to a different way of being, a connected way of being that recognizes the holiness of human relationships. That sounds a little countercultural today, but Jesus' followers have always been a little countercultural. In today's gospel text from Matthew, we hear how Jesus and his disciples were accused of hanging out with all the wrong sorts of people, of just letting anyone come and join them at table. And yes, that's what they did. In first century Roman Palestine, the young church's support of a peaceful society grew criticism from zealots who wanted the oppressive pagan government destroyed by violence if necessary. But those same church members were also always in danger of arrest and imprisonment and death for daring to pledge their allegiance to Christ Jesus rather than to the emperor. People of faith today who walk that difficult middle ground also find themselves criticized. And followers of Jesus have always been accused of seeming wishy-washy as they take a stand not for ideologies that can be printed up in some bullet list on a shiny flyer, but for the sacredness and dignity of every human life. When people come first above ideology, then truth cannot be reduced to fit on a bumper sticker. Instead, it gets expressed in conversations that happen over time, conversations that take hard work and patience and the gentle wisdom of the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful thing that Christian communities can express a more generous and expansive way of being, that we love and respect one another even when we disagree. Our congregation here at Good Shepherd is a beautiful example of that. So was a little church in Rutherfordton, North Carolina, where I had the privilege of doing quite a lot of supply preaching over the course of a year. At that little church, you'd pull up in the parking lot and see old cars with rusty quarter panels next to a shiny new BMW, next to a couple of Jeeps and a Subaru, next to a few motorcycles. The congregation inside was just as diverse, but the members of that congregation had learned how to see one another as sisters and brothers in Christ over and above any other label that they might wear. 
we all have a lot of hard work to do as we live into God's vision for us as Christ's body here in this place, just as all of Jesus's followers do in their places of life and work and ministry. But we don't do this hard work alone. This is God's world and God does his kingdom work of restoring people and creation to wholeness. We're just invited to help, to peek over our Lord's shoulder and hand him tools and let him show us how to help with the simple things that he deems us capable of doing. God is so patient with us as we watch and learn and try to do what we can. Jesus says to his disciples and to us, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, I've never worn a yoke, although this stole is a symbol of one. I've never hitched a horse to a plow or to a cart, although I would always slow down on the Pennsylvania back roads where we used to live to watch the Amish farmers plow their fields with teams of horses. Such a beautiful sight. I've never worn a yoke, but I have moved some heavy furniture in my time. I've pushed broken cars and I've pulled swimming with other family members, my brother's boat back into dock after the engine cut out a few hundred yards from shore. Now, before you laugh and say that there's no comparison, please know that I absolutely agree with you. But there might be one similarity between working with other people to push a broken car or carry a really heavy bookshelf and being yoked to a plow. And that is when you're pulling or pushing or lifting together with someone who's a lot stronger than you are, it can feel pretty easy when you're in sync with what that other person is doing, what that stronger person is doing. When you pay attention to how fast they're moving and when they shift their weight and where they place their feet. But if you're not paying attention and you end up working against them, then the load becomes so much more difficult. You end up pushing against them and the load or even worse, pulling it all down on your shoulders and being crushed under its weight. I've never been crushed, but I have ended up face down in the mud. When Jesus invites us to share his yoke, it's pretty clear that he is the stronger partner in this effort. Our yoke is so much easier when we work in sync with him. His pace is gentle and he only gives us the weight that we can carry. When we are working in sync with what God is up to in the world, things are so much easier. When we do those simple acts of love that Jesus invites us to do, when we do what we can to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God. And God in grace invites us to be part of God's kingdom, bringing about wholeness in our families and in our communities, making transformation happening, like bringing a plot of bare grass to a garden of flowers and vegetables. Now, this is not to say that God's work doesn't create resistance, because in fact, it usually does. But we know that we are working in obedience to the one who commands us to love one another. And there's so much peace in that. There's the satisfaction that hopefully when we come to the end of our lives, we'll have left the world a little better than it was when we found it. You see, woven into this passage from Matthew's gospel is the idea of obedience. Those teams of horses that the Amish farmers work with, they know how to follow the cues of the farmer and they know how to read one another's signals Working together, their load is so much easier than if they tugged and pushed and bucked. We were created to walk with Jesus and learn from him and live in relationship with others. In our baptism, we were given that yoke of working alongside him. 
and we took up that yoke when we could express our faith for ourselves as we grew up, whether that happened at age 12 or 35 or 70. What a privilege it is to be a part of God's ongoing creation and restoration of the world, the reweaving of heaven and earth into one. May God give us the wisdom and love to be obedient to the spirit of Christ as we share his yoke, even when, no, especially when others might think we're crazy for putting people above ideas and love above all else. Amen.